everyone. You found Sanctuary's Coffee and Conversation Show. I'm Myrna Haskell, Executive Editor of Sanctuary Magazine. This is an online publication for women that empowers and inspires with a focus on the arts, philanthropic pursuits, health and wellness, culture and community. You can find us at sanctuary-magazine.com. This morning, my guest is Chris Atley. She is CEO of Decisions by Design. She is also an award-winning success coach, speaker, best-selling author, and her book, Abundant Solutions, and that is S-O-U-L-U-S-I-O-N-S, is <laughs> excerpted in the magazine this month. So listeners can find that from our book excerpt section, which is linked right from the homepage, so it's easy to get to. So go check out Chris's book. Good morning, Chris. Thank you so much for joining me today. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Happy this to be is here. wonderful. And I have to say to you and listeners, I love the color you're wearing. <laughs> oh, thank you so, so much. So yes, you look fabulous. And this we're is ready. an oldie but a goodie. It's yeah, right? Vibe. You have to keep those. <laughs> Today we're talking about a topic that is right up your alley, I know, because we're talking about executive burnout, and that is the relationship between self-care and success, right? So I just wanted to preface the conversation by talking a little bit about those executives for a second, right? Because I know a lot of listeners that we have, you know, they're maybe entrepreneurs, they, they've started a startup, you know, they're managers maybe for a large company. And these folks, lots of times, you know, they're juggling 10 things at once, they're wearing 20 hats, you know, they go, they have a plan for the day of all these things they're going to get done, and then a, an emergency comes up, right? So this is kind of how their days go, day after day after day. So it's really important to talk about what we're talking about today, and we wanted to start the conversation, you and I, by talking about the relationship specifically of self-care and productivity, so I just want to say the second part of this with that idea of, I just need more than 24 hours in my day. You know, if I had three <laughs> more hours today, or if there were more than 24 hours, I could do everything I needed to do. And then I wouldn't be stressed. So let's just kind of dig into that self-care and its relationship to um, productivity specifically. Yes. And I love that um, because, you know, if there were more hours in the day, we would just fill them with more stuff. So I know. <laughs> That's so it's true like, though, right? Yeah, it really is. It's really, you know, getting to the root cause of how we make those decisions and, and why we feel the need to fill up our time so much, which I know we're probably going to touch on as well. But in terms of, you know, being more productive, it's amazing what can happen when we give our minds the space to let those ideas and let those brainstorms in. And then we're operating from a place that where we just have so much more of a relaxed and joyful energy, and that leads to different decisions and different results. And so that's really what I have noticed for myself and with, you know, working with clients over the last 16 years is that our decisions become different we become more resourceful and we start to see solutions around us that we may not have necessarily seen because we're, we have our head down and we're so busy and it's go, go, go and get this done and this done. And of course we all need to, you know, get things done and take that inspired action, but we're so much more effective and impactful if we can just take a breath, operate from a more calm place and really, you know, as I was saying, let those solutions come in and those brainstorms. And that is what is going to skyrocket our path as well. I totally agree. And I think it's um, in terms of its relation to like sort of boostering our creativity. That's true mm -hmm. too, right? Absolutely. Because I heard you say, you know, if our nose is down and we're so caught up in all of these things that we have to do, say in the next hour and a half or whatever it is, um, you know, and deadlines and all of that stuff, you kind of lose the creativity as well, right? You really do. And my best ideas and brainstorms always come from a walk in nature. So I've just kind of call, started calling it that this is my boardroom is going for these walks. And it's amazing the ideas that come in, the brainstorms and exactly what you're saying, the creativity and the creation. And that part to me is the magical part where we have all of those ideas and we can see the next steps 
um, to whatever it is that we're trying to figure out or implement or, you know, bring to fruition. Yeah. And, you know, when you mentioned that walking in nature, I know with me, it's, and my husband always jokes about this, he's got to get me away from the office for me to relax, you know? So when I'm on <laughs> vacation, the one thing I do do is I say, I'm not going to bring my work. Like I am yes. going to truly give myself time, recharge, reset and all of that. But you're so right, Chris. It, it's really at those times I get all of these like fabulous creative ideas for the magazine. I mean, yes. I'm just like, oh my God, I can't believe I, uh, you're not even trying, but right. it's just a different kind of like relaxed mindset. It's more like open or something, I think. It right? really is. Yeah. And then I love that. I can feel that energy through the waves just with you talking about it. And it's so inspiring. And then we're re-energized and we're, you know, ready to bring those ideas to fruition. And it becomes more exciting as well, because we're just so inspired about, you know, the new idea we've just had. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that um, a lot of this boils down to also stress levels. You know what I mean? Because if if you are in a leadership or a management position and you have so many different balls in the air and you're dealing with so many situations at once, this then brings on the stress, right? Mm -hmm. And so a big part of this topic, I thought, was the relation between um, self-care and like stress and decision making. So mm -hmm. self-care, for instance, is supposed to make us feel more relaxed, more healthy, more wholesome in our own body, right? Mm -hmm. And hopefully the result of that is we're feeling less stressed. But let's face it, we all feel stress, right? And we all have those days where things are really crazy. And so I wanted to dig in a little bit to stress and decision making because entrepreneurs and business leaders are making decisions constantly all day long, right? And yes, so if absolutely. our brain is in stress mode or that fight flight mode or, you know, the different yes. things they talk about, what happens to decision making in those cases? Yes. Well, what I found, and I just want to preface a little bit, you know, that self-care to me, of course, can be a mani petty, but it's so much more than that, which that serves a purpose as well. But it's really about how we're making decisions and taking time for ourselves to me goes back to being worthy now of living a life that brings us joy and happiness and doing the things that we love. And it's how we talk to ourselves. It's how we, you know, set boundaries around our time and all of those things. So to me, it's sort of, you know, the whole self, how are we? It's a whole way of life, life. I think I'm hearing from you. I love yes. that. I exactly. think a lot of people think, oh, self-care, I have to, you know, meditate for five minutes and I'm going to go out and I'm going to do a, you know, one mile walk and get fresh air and vitamin D and then I'm going to go, right? Yes, exactly. These, like, things, and then it puts stress on the self-care time. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And that's what was happening to me. I knew I felt better when I did it, but then it was, you know, adding to my to-do list of one more thing to fit in. Yeah. And so it wasn't until I realized that, oh, this is much more about a way of being and how are we making decisions about ourselves and our time all throughout the day. And that's really, you know, we want to tune into that and it can be different for everyone. You know, for you, it might be a vacation. For me, it might be a nature walk. Someone else might be a meditation. You know, whatever that is, that's going to help us feel more calm, more grounded, happier. And then when we make decisions from that place, we're making them from so much more of an empowered place. And so that's to me why it's so important because it goes back to our decision making. And if we're so stressed out and, you know, running around, we're really operating from a place of fear at that point. We're right. just, that's like, right. There's not enough time. I can't get anything done, you know, go, 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 go. And then it's no coincidence that we create more of that. You know, I'm a big believer in the law of attraction and energy and what we put out comes back. And if we're putting out a crazy stressed out energy, not a coincidence that then, you know, something happens in a relationship or something happens at work or the washing machine breaks down and causes financial stress. You know, it leads to all these things. Whereas if we take the time 
for ourselves and we're tuning in throughout the day, you know, what do I need, you know, having compassion when, when stuff comes up, cause it is going to come up, but even just shifting and having compassion in that moment, we're changing our energy, right? So, you know, I always think of it as, um, you know, people will say, oh, you need to be positive all the time. It's not that it's just a realigning from a place of love and joy and peace. And yeah, hard things are going to come up. Heavy things are going to come up like grief, you know, all of, that's life and that's what happens. Um, but the more we can have compassion for ourselves and just, you know, what do I need right now? Or, you know, maybe I need to talk to a friend or, you know, whatever that is, if we can, and even just, I'm feeling sad right now, just acknowledging it. I mean, right. we've, return to that place of love and happiness uh, and peace. And that's the energy that we're putting out instead. So, um, you know, it might not feel happy in those moments, but it is a more loving energy that we're putting out. So I kind of got off track there, but no, that's okay. Because I, you're actually making me think of a few things that directly relates to this though. So if you are coming from that place, as you described, I think that sort of is a catalyst to a more open door policy, a more yes. collaborative policy with those who are working around you. Yes. Because let's face it, as you said, if you're giving off the negative energy, then there's negative energy all around the team and the employees and everything. And that sort of like spirals out of control and makes things go wrong anyway, right? It really does. And you know, when we're in that place, we're hanging on so tight and we're so fear-based that then we're trying to control everything around us and everybody because we are so afraid it's going to fall off the rails and it's like you're saying yeah it just leads to a big downward spiral of stress and disempowered thinking and that can lead to health issues all kinds of things right and I think there's two the you know when you're when you're leading a company or you're an entrepreneur solopreneur these kinds of things you feel the weight of everything on your own shoulders right mm -hmm. so you have that weight of responsibility that i think adds to the stress too mm -hmm. and so i wanted to dig into delegation because of this and i know because of you know times we've had different articles in the magazine and other shows i've done this is a big, it's a like push button uh, issue because a lot of leaders have trouble with this piece delegating. Now you might say to yourself, if you have trouble delegating, you know, how are you going to do things? Especially if you're working for a large company or if there, there's a lot of things going on, you have to trust other people. So I kind of wanted to dig into delegation, Chris, and then sort of talk about that not so great style, which is the micromanager, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> let's talk about delegation and micromanaging and how we can get out of that sort of death spiral into a more pleasant place, I guess I want to say. Yes. <laughs> so yes, delegating first, that. what What do you want to say about learning to delegate better? I guess everybody yeah, delegates, but know, delegate better. What I found is it all comes back to beliefs. So what we believe, and, you know, we sort of touched on this earlier, but we need to look at what is keeping us in this place of making decisions and that I have to do it all myself, or I'm the only one who can do this well and properly, right? And look at what if I shifted that? And what if I thought, you know, there's people that can do some of these tasks even faster than me or better than me. And what is it like to receive support, right? It all goes back to self-love. So how right. we're making decisions, you know, it's okay to receive. And I think as women, we especially have a really hard time with this, which we're, we're such givers, but that keeps us in a place of not receiving all the gifts that are there for us as well. And all of that love and support. And what if I could find an amazing person that could support me in my business and take things off my plate and so it really just involves looking at what are, what are the thoughts, what are the, th what are the beliefs, the thinking that is keeping me from delegating and start to flip that. What's a more empowered way of thinking so that I can receive the support that is going to help me have more peace and happiness in my own life and grow my business. Right. 
I think that um, in terms of the micromanagement piece, because I think I heard you say sometimes we feel like, you know, somebody else isn't going to do it as well as I can or whatever. I think the flip side to that is as a leader or a business owner, you need to dig in to your own person and say to yourself, what's taking me too long? What am Mm -hmm. I not so great at? Right. What are my strengths? I think a lot of people, it's easy to kind of feel what your strengths are because you know you can hit the ground running with that and you've or you've gotten accolades in that area or you've had a lot of success in that area but it's hard to really like look at yourself from the 11th floor and say listen Myrna this isn't going too well (laughs) you know you don't do this too well find somebody else to do this so is I guess what I'm getting to is part of it is really knowing self too right Mm -hmm. what your strengths are what your weaknesses are and then seeing in other people the same kinds of things. Don't put Mary on this because this has 10 different pieces and she's better when she can focus on one thing. And that one thing that she can focus on, she does better than me anyway. It's all of that too. So it's a lot, it's people skills as well, I guess too, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I love that you brought up strengths and weaknesses. And even I would add in, what do we enjoy, right? What pieces do we, because we might be really good at something, but not enjoy it that much. And maybe somebody else loves to do that. So, you know, just looking, maybe somebody else loves to crunch numbers. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) No, but yeah, I always love thinking about the 80, 20 rule as well. You know, what, what is the, you know, 20% of the activity that's bringing in 80% of the revenue and um, focusing on those tasks as well. Cause I think as an entrepreneur, we can, get off track. And we do, we are so creative. We have so many great ideas and looking at, you know, maybe that's a good one for next quarter or next year and planning things out a little bit better. I know for myself, I tend to, you know, have a great idea or what I'm inspired about and want to implement it yesterday. So it's like, you know, hold on, let's plan properly and let's look at the support, you know, we need in order to make some of these things happen. So the, because the planning is going to help the productivity too, to get back right. to productivity, right? I mean, you yes. might come out with the same, you know, beautiful project, the same end game, but maybe one took four weeks and one took 10 days. And yes. it's the whole thing about ROI, right? I totally. mean, you have to look at too, how can we tweak this so that we can get to what we want in the end quicker without yes. being stressed though, right? And that's what I was going to say too. Yes, I'm so glad you said that because, you know, we really have to go back to the decision-making. How am I making decisions? Am I making decisions from a place of fear or from a place of faith and trust that things are going to work out all in the right timing. Because if we're in fear, then that's when we tend to load up the schedule and say yes to too much and take on too much, even to ourselves, you know, just with our own ideas, you know, thinking we need to just implement everything now. And, um, you know, if we can have a little more faith that it's happening when it's supposed to, we can, you know, flow with a little more ease and have a little more trust. And I think, you know, a big part of it too, is that collaborative piece, you know, I, I think for folks that, you know, they either own their own company or they're running a department and they have, and maybe they are a very creative person, but let's face it, things can get stale too, right? Mm-hmm. So when you bring a bunch of different points of view in the room and you really give those people the space, the space to kind of run in their own direction, it makes things more interesting and more fresh too, right? Yes, yes, I love that. And the the whole collaborative process and what you touched on earlier, when we're less stressed, we can do that more because we have more space for that connection, right? That connection to come in with other people and just enjoy that process of collaborating and connecting and, you know, everyone's inspired and we're making things happen. And, um, you know, that's hard to do if we're super stressed out. It's yeah. really hard to do. And, you know, I've said, I know I've said this before on this show and in other places, so I hope my listeners aren't getting bored with me on it, but I have to say it again, because we're talking about this. There's something about being in a room with a group of women or, you know, a really good team where the energy just makes it more productive, the in the same room energy. Do you find that? Like, I make sure that 
I get together with, you know, some of my top editors and writers every year in person several times, even though we're living all in different areas, right? Because Mm -hmm. every single time, Chris, we get like a week's worth of work done. And it's not like this kind of thing, like we're usually having lunch, we're having a good time, but it's the energy in the room Uh, where everything's just coming together and we like look at the end of the day and we're like oh my god we got so much done do you know what I'm talking about I I love that that. yes it's like feeding off each other right and everyone's just in that zone of creativity and invention and yeah I know that's the best and then that makes you happy and it makes you less stressed because you know you're getting things done you're feeding off your team members yeah Yeah, I wanted to, though, to talk about perhaps an elephant in the room, because I know there's people out there listening right now. And this is what they're thinking. Are you ready? They're thinking, Mm -hmm. listen, I got this demanding job. I've still got kids at home. They're teenagers now. I'm running them around when I'm done with work late. And I'm dealing with helping out my elderly parents. I don't have two minutes or even 30 minutes a day to stop and take a breath. Like, what do we tell to those people? Do you have tips for those people that just say, it's not that I'm overwhelmed because I don't Mm -hmm. know how to time manage or I don't know how to take a breath, but I'm just overwhelmed simply because my schedule is overwhelming. Like I have so many things. I don't know what to do with myself. What do you say to those people? Because I know yes. they're out there right now. Listen yes. To- and you know what? I I was one of those people and I it continues to be my life lesson because old patterns die hard, right? Um, so when I first started practicing self-care, I had a newborn. So, you know, it's like, I don't think there's ever a good time when this is our personality, this type A driven knows how to get things done, but at what expense and what cost, right? And what I learned is when I started making time for myself and there's no right or wrong way to do this, again, whatever lights you up and makes you feel good. But when I started to do that, I realized something really important happened. And that's that I became nicer and I became happier And I had more to give to my family because I, and I forget who said this, but I love this. I filled up my own cup first and then was giving from my saucer, right? So if you picture like a- Oh, I like that. Yeah. I don't know who said that, but I love it. And it's like- Giving from my saucer. I haven't heard that. I've heard that, you know, fill your cup up, but I didn't hear the part. I like that. Yeah. You fill up your own cup and give from your saucer. And it might feel selfish at first, but- It really isn't because when we become happier, we have more to give to other people. We have more patience, right? We have more love and connection and, uh, and just more energy. If we're depleted, we don't have as much energy. And so that's, you know, going back to how we are more productive and all of those things. Um, So what I would say, though, is start small, start where you are. So I've run self-care challenges in the past. And for some people, it was just taking the time to drink their coffee hot. And that's okay. I'm getting the tingles. That's okay. Just start where you are and build from there. So just choose one thing. And even if it's one, if this is totally brand new, I would say choose something for the month even. Don't even try to say every week. Just something this month that you can do for yourself. If so you're give us, give us a couple of ideas that you might have or that you, you might have shared with some of your clients, because I know you're also a coach and you do a lot yeah. of these speaking engagements. Do you have any like, or maybe something you heard from somebody else, something that, yes. you, that you can share specifically? So what I started doing um, when I first started working with a coach to make sure I wanted to be a coach, and then I made all these changes, and this was at the same time, is um, I started making appointments to go for a massage. Now that is so much more commonplace now at the time people didn't just go to, you know, for a massage. Um, It was more if you had an ailment or something was going on. So that was a big one for me. Um, So just even going for a monthly massage was such a big one. I started doing walks in nature. Um, There's so many things you could do, even just reading a book. It doesn't have to cost money, a hot bath maybe playing music. My husband's is playing music. He loves, 
loves that. That's his way to shut down too. These are all ways to sort of do. And I know with massage, you don't realize how tightly wound you are until you do that, until you take a dive in the pool and do some laps or until you get that massage and you're like, it, it feels like a, like just a release. It's almost scary that went away. Right. Have (laughs) I really been walking around like this all day long? Right. And that's, if you ever feel that way, because I know I have. Yes, totally. I know I hold a lot of tension in my neck and then I'll go and I'm like, oh, I, yeah, that was, became my baseline. Just what we tolerate, right? We tolerate all these things. So, um, but yeah, the self-care, it can be, it could be anything. It can be, you know, watching a movie. It could be a coffee with a friend, um, meditation, you know, just sitting and breathing and staring at the wall. You know, it's, it's so I like think what whatever. I'm hearing from you, Chris, is that, um, when we try to schedule these things too much, it just becomes part of our stressfully scheduled day that we think we we need more than 24 hours for, right? Mm -hmm. So it's really, I think I'm hearing from you that it's really a mindset that if we have the time to give ourselves a break on a regular basis, no matter what it is, it doesn't have to be a specific, you go and run for a mile or you get a massage. As you said, it could be whatever it is that just helps you shut down and go, right? Yes. I will say though, I have found it does need to be scheduled in on the calendar or it just doesn't seem. And then you think it doesn't go in then. Yeah. So So what you're saying is schedule it, but don't make it So that it has to be all of a sudden, like tomorrow, you've got all this stuff you're going to do. Yeah. Yeah. Make it slow. Start off off where you are. So if you're really feeling overwhelmed, then look at what could you do in the next month, right? And maybe schedule in some time that way. And then you can build on it from there. And then it can start to be weekly. And then it can start, it becomes addictive. It's a lifestyle. It feels so good. Yeah. Yeah. But I always block off the time. So I start and start my mornings this way. So what I found was when my kids were little, I was rushing through the day to get to that time at night. Cause I had it at night for myself. Okay. And, but what would happen is by the time I got them to sleep, then I would, you know, read a couple of, you know, sentences of a book and fall right to sleep. And so I wasn't getting that time. So with the help of a coach, it's so funny how you don't see your own blind spots, right? But the coach was like, why don't you do it in the morning instead? It was like, ah, that's a great idea. <laughs> so yeah. I started getting up before the kids in the morning. And this is still what I do to this day. And I love it. It is my time in the morning. I have love coffee. Somewhere. I have the coffee ready. And I'll, you know, do a little meditation. I'll um, listen to an inspiring book. Um, And I'd like to go outside in the summer or, you know, I do live in California, but I don't always go out in the winter. (laughs) Um, But I love to be outside where I can in the morning for that time. And, um, you know, I'll just do whatever it is that I want to do with that time. So yeah, I think schedule it in, but then, but then you're not thinking flexible. about it being scheduled in once it becomes yeah. a lifestyle change, right? It it's just part of your day at exactly. that point. And then I find for me anyway, and everybody's different, but starting my day that way, it just helps me to feel grounded. It helps me to feel more connected to something bigger than myself, you know, whatever your beliefs are around that. And I, it just sets the tone for the, for the day. And even today we, we had, you know, our time slot is earlier today, Pacific time, and I'm flying out later today. And I still, of course, I've got a to-do list a mile long, but I, this morning was like, absolutely not. I am still starting my day this way. I did my morning routine and then I went and walked the dogs um, because they need a good walk right yeah. before I, I leave later and it's just it just was this misty magical morning and I was like I am getting out there because even though I think I might walk them later I know I won't because I'll get into my to-do list and I just went then of course I get back it's muggy here I'm, I'm all sweaty I'm like it's muggy everywhere <laughs> right I'm gonna get yeah. to the pool really quick 
went skinny dipped in the pool. No one was around and did a couple of, that's why my hair is wet on the ends. And I just did a couple of laps and rinsed off. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Like, well, now we know that it works, Chris, because you're on the show, totally relaxed and you're flying out later and you got all that done already. (laughs) Right, exactly. (laughs) Which is more than I got done so far today. (laughs) I'm not going to be stressed out to do my to-do list. I'm way more energized and happy and just, I could cry because it's just such a sense of inner peace. And it's like, how can that not extend out to every single thing that we do? Right. You know, on out. Yeah. Well, I want to give you a moment or two to tell our listeners a little bit about your services, you know, speaking engagements you do, maybe an upcoming project. Is there anything you'd like to share? Oh, sure. Well, my book just came out, which is in the background there, Abundant Solutions, which is, you know, so fun. And there's much more in there about uh, all the things that we were talking about today and really getting to the root cause of beliefs and perfectionism and, you know, how we um, make decisions around our time. Um, And there's, you know, lots of resources there on my website, chrisatley.com and backslash book is where you'll also get my free self-care course. Oh, that's and, awesome. Um, yeah. And learn just more about speaking and coaching through there as well. And of course I'm on social media and all the things. And Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So I hope listeners that you dig in a little bit more and that book is excerpted in Sanctuary this month. So you can find an excerpt. And also there are links to, to Chris's pages and to her website and all of that. But oh, I want to thank, thank you, you so much for joining me today, Chris. This has been fabulous. This is a thank huge you. topic and everybody struggles oh. with this. So thank you for sharing all of your insights. I truly appreciate it. Oh, thank you. I loved it. I could hear oh, good, more. Good. It was a fun this. conversation so. to you. <laughs> I'd like to close. Sure. I'd like to close as I always do by wishing all of our listeners and our readers good health, happiness, and continued inspiration. Thank you so much for joining us today.